In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm here, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, to concerndize you about the need of celebrating a great jubilee. We people are used to wish and celebrate birthdays, names days, feast days, anniversaries, and also various kinds of jubilees, uh, silver jubilee, golden jubilee. I celebrated uh, the golden jubilee of my priesthood recently. But my dear Christians of all denominations, also leaders of all denominations, bishops, pastors, or cardinals, or pope, all of you should think of celebrating a great jubilee, that is, uh, the jubilee of our own salvation. We know in 2033, it is going to be 2000 years that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for us, washed us, cleansed us from sin, and stampeded the head of Satan and liberated us, and won salvation. In other words, heaven was opened for us. Should we not celebrate that great event? Yes, it is 2000 years since Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist. In the year 2033, definitely we are to get together to celebrate the main events of our salvation. The death of Christ on Calvary and also his uh, commitment to us, giving himself to us fully, even the last drop of his blood for our redemption, our salvation, we must celebrate, my children. And also, uh, our sins were washed and we were liberated from the power of Satan and a church was founded. In the year 2033, it is going to be 2,000 years since church began at Pentecost. Hallelujah! We had, in the Acts of the Apostles, we read about various Pentecost. Pentecost in Jerusalem, Pentecost in Ephesus, Pentecost in Samaria. That means all the Christians together were awakened by the power of the Holy Spirit and joined together as one. So should we not celebrate that event? Also, if we look, it is 2,000 years we got a mother. That is Blessed Virgin Mary. On the cross, Jesus said, Behold your mother. Till that time we were orphans. Now we have a mother. Should we not joyfully celebrate the uh, Jubilee in the year 2033? I say we must. So if we look at the great events uh, like the washing of the feet and the institution of the Holy Eucharist, uh, that means God, Jesus, came to this world to be with us always. As we read in Matthew uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 23, he to be Emmanuel, to be with us. By sin, man lost that friendship, fellowship with God. Jesus came to give us back that fellowship and friendship. And he called us friends. And my dear brothers and sisters, surely we must celebrate that event. Uh, that jubilee, 2,000 years passing. We are just about 10 years only to prepare for that. Also, uh, many things that happened, the Jesus going to Calvary, taking all our sins, and we had to celebrate that event. How? Let the Holy Spirit inspire the leaders of the church and all the believers to come together and to celebrate this great event of our salvation, our own salvation. The vicarious death of Jesus on Calvary was the greatest event that divided the epochs, that divided the age. The whole world was divided before Christ and after Christ. That event uh, was 2000 years uh, in 2033. We celebrated in the year 2000 uh, the Jubilee of his uh, birth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, but we have to celebrate much more the event of salvation, I say. And it is 2,000 years people began to call upon the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the apostles went around saying, And the heaven and on earth 
there is no other name than the name of Jesus for salvation. Hallelujah. So that name began to be called out 2000 years ago. Uh, that means from the time Jesus died on the cross and rose again. And the two great events, don't forget, Jesus rose again on the third day. And then after 40 days, he ascended into heaven. And he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father and through the Holy Spirit living with us. Oh, great events, my children. We are to celebrate this in 2033. Let's call it a big jubilee, maybe a double millennium jubilee. No, I don't know how to name it. Uh, whatever maybe. Uh, we have to celebrate it with great clarity. Uh, uh, how? I say we have to preach the word of God all throughout the world. Not only for Christians, even for non-Christians. Uh, we must uh, uh, know that uh, preaching of the gospel and the doing of wonders and miracles also began uh, 2000 years ago from 2033. Hallelujah. It's after the death of Christ. After his resurrection, disciples went around preaching and doing miracles and wonders. And the greatest act of God's love we see on Calvary. And now in the Holy Eucharist, this is my body, this is my blood. He is giving himself to us in the Holy Eucharist every day. That began, yes, we know one day before the death of Christ. And the 2000 years will be complete in 2033. So my God, my children, with a great enthusiasm, let us celebrate it. For me, I say we need a radical change in the church. Now we see the Protestants or the Pentecostals with a different group they call, our is the real church. And the Orthodox also will say, oh, their sister, original church. And Catholics much more. I say none of the churches today have the original character of the church Jesus founded. Hallelujah. The church Jesus founded, we can see uh, at the foot of the cross, number one, with Mother Mary, the group, praying, praying. And then Pentecost happened. We read that uh, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. They were praying together and the Holy Spirit came upon them in the form of the fiery tongues. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? They became one body, one spirit. Hallelujah. They were one. There was no division. Today, the churches have more than 35,000 divisions. This is not the church. No, no, no. Definitely no. Jesus found only one church. It's man who divided the church and named them with a different name. I said denomination. All this come from man. Jesus the Lord wanted his disciples to be one. And we see that uh, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, how they were one together and uh, this oneness. And they were living in holiness. We know that they were uh, always following the rules God gave. Be holy as God is holy. Be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. And then they were living together, one body, celebrating the Holy Eucharist, proclaiming the word of God, uh, and togetherness, that is very important, oneness in the church. And it is for that we know Jesus paid on Calvary. And now, I can tell you very honestly, the whole world is against Christians. Am I right? Even recently Pope said, the most persecuted church is uh, Catholic Church or Christian churches. It is correct. Uh, in every country, uh, I know the non-Christians want to wipe away Christianity. Why? I say one of the reasons, uh, it is because of their disappointment. Uh, they are all expecting the Christians to be authentic Christians. Now we see in a Romans chapter 8, verse 18 onwards. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed to for us. Creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. Hallelujah. The whole creation 
waiting for the revelation of the children of God. Who are the children of God? Who can call God Abba Father? Those who received his spirit. We read in, we read in Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. Uh, when the time came, Mary conceived a child and he gave his spirit. All those who believed in Jesus and received the Holy Spirit can call God Abba Father. Yes, my dear Christians, whether you belong to Catholic Church or Orthodox Church or Protestant Church or any Pentecostal group, you should know your greatness, your identity. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. You can call God Abba. Now, people are waiting all over the world. People who are God's children. Today are they seeing God's children? 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 says, He who sin belongs to Satan. In verse 10 very clearly says, This is the way to distinguish between God's children and the children of Satan. Those who sin are the children of Satan. Those who live in righteousness or holiness are the children of God. Today, if we look at the world, we can see Christians are so many with all kinds of evils, uh, breaking all the commandments of God. Uh, I need not explain that clearly in this short video. We can see on earth, it is we Christians who do not keep the commandments and love God. So it's a time uh, in 2033, uh, there should be a church where people love God by keeping the commandments and by keeping the commandment of loving one another. And that oneness should be so Jesus prayed, we know, I have uh, the sheep that do not belong to this fold. Who are those sheep that do not belong to this fold? Maybe Hindus, maybe Muslims or Sikhs or many people who belong to other region, religions. They belong to Jesus' flock. Hallelujah. Don't forget that Jesus is only the monopoly of Christians. No. Jesus came for all. He died for all. He shed his blood for all. And he saved all. So, uh, Jesus says, I have other sheep, maybe in other religions. And then he said, they, they should hear my voice and I should lead them and they'll become one flock and one shepherd. Hallelujah. The will of God the Father through Jesus Christ is that the whole mankind should be saved. For that, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, let this world see the children of God in us. And not fighting children, fighting between Orthodox and Catholics or Catholics and Protestants and Protestants and Pentecostals. No, we must stop that one flock and then loving each other, helping each other. And then I'm sure keeping the values of the commandments of God, uh, especially uh, uh, moral life, moral values, coming away from killing people. Now we see bloodshed everywhere, even the bloodshed of the infants in the mother's womb. Uh, a time should come uh, that we stop all this and divorces is what God has joined together, man breaking. And also we see uh, even the plan of God completely broken. God created man as male and female. And now man says no, male and male, female and female. And all these are practiced and done, legalized by Christians. So the time to stop. All the Christians should come and follow Jesus and follow the teachings of Jesus. And for that, we had to plan these 10 years, maybe various kinds of uh, retreats, conventions, study class, study groups, prayer groups, and a kind of a, a evangelization, reaching out to all the people. And also, my dear Christians, a time to pray. A time to pray for the celebration of the Jubilee. The Great Jubilee, I say, a double millennium Great Jubilee in 2032. So, in my talks, in future, I'll be touching this subject. Yes, we need to celebrate it powerfully. A new evangelization required. A new look at the shape of the church. The present shape of the church is not the shape of the church Jesus founded. No, definitely no. 
uh, in the church Jesus founded, he was the head, not the Pope, not the patriarch, not the bishop. And the people of God won. And the bishops were there, or bishop priests were there, all were to serve the people of God. And the leader was Jesus Christ. We read that very clearly in Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 8, 18. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, 18. Jesus is the head of the church and we are the body. Also we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. We are all members of the body of Christ, the church. We are each one is a part of that church. Hallelujah. So we have to come to that awareness, that oneness, that holiness. And then I tell you, the children of God will be revealed, manifested here on earth. For that, the whole world is looking with the eagerness, uh, with the bad pines. We know in Matthew chapter 24, we read about the end of times. And many people are scared these days about the end of times because there are wars, kingdoms rising against kingdom, and there is an earthquake and flood, persecution, etc., etc. You can read that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 onwards. And there the Lord is telling, when all this happen, uh, don't be worried. There will be false prophets and there will be all kinds of people against Christ and the teachings. And uh, very clearly he says, uh, don't be alarmed. It is only the starting of the labor pain. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what is labor pain? All of you may not know. You may know it. Yes, labor pain, but pain to bring forth a child. All that we see today in the world, maybe war, rumors of war, fighting, killing, or uh, epidemics, uh, all these are happening. These are my children, but pines. We are going to have a new church, I say. Uh, that will be in 2033. Not simply celebrating externally, but Christians uh, deciding to live authentic Christian life. Hallelujah. And then seeing the authentic good Christian life, and non-Christians coming towards Christendom, Christianity. It is going to happen. It should happen. Thus, let us prepare for the great jubilee in 2033. Close your eyes. I pray for a moment that this event may be a great event where the Christians get together and celebrate it meaningfully and Salvation of Christ be brought to the whole world. Lord Jesus, thank you and praise you for all those who listen to this video. Lord, many are quiet about the celebration of the great jubilee of Jesus in 2033. Many are not aware of it. I pray that Pope, Cardinals, Bishops, Patriarchs and Pastors, Priests, all preach and make the people aware of the need of celebration of this great event of celebration of the great jubilee in 2033. Jubilee of the death of Christ, jubilee of the salvation of mankind, jubilee of the church and jubilee of the Holy Eucharist and jubilee of Jesus resurrection ascension and jubilee of receiving Mother Mary as our own mother, jubilee of evangelization, jubilee of doing miracles and wonders. I pray that all Christians may become aware of it and prepare for this great event. And in 2033, unlike the prophets of doom speak about the end times and end of the world, a new world may be dawned uh, through new evangelization and new birth of the church. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon this earth to the church. Come upon everyone that there may be a new church in the celebration of the great jubilee in 2033. I bless all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.